so to start i would like to preference this video by saying audio memory is incredibly short term so i have notes to kind of keep track of my thoughts throughout the durations of this test i got a subscription for title in order to test out the 360 audio i tested out the 360 audio using two different devices the sony xperia 1 mark 2 that i'm currently recording with and the iphone 12 pro max in order to try to get the best and highest quality that i could i side by side comparison with other applications such as quobuzz and amazon hd for whichever tracks that i couldn't find on quobuzz some of these tracks are not well known to me so in in short it's kind of up in the air a little bit as far as the highest fidelity of some of those tracks simply because i may have a bias towards one type of sound over another type of sound but because this is audio it's pretty much all subjective and i'm just giving my thoughts so let's go ahead and talk about it okay so these headphones are really really good and i love them in order to do this test i did take off the um, sound preference that i did have set up and that i did engage with and kept it neutral as possible in order to run the 360 audio test let's go ahead and get into my track list and i'll give you my impressions of those tracks that i've done and hopefully maybe some of you have already done this or you can go back and double back and take a look at some of my tracks so i created a playlist here on title and i am running with seven tracks in order to do this test mind you the 360 audio um is somewhat limited and I am unable to get some of these tracks or get some tracks from my initial impressions of these headphones to specifically suit the 360 audio features or needs so I just use some random tracks some of them I know some of them I'm, I'm not as familiar with some of these songs are newer songs but like I said it's all in good fun and maybe some of you guys do like these songs but I'm just gonna give you my uh, subjective opinions about how I experienced those tracks from regular listening versus the 360 audio listening. So my first track is by Herbie Hancock, Watermelon Man. This track is just well produced. I own this album in CD multiple times, digitally as well as physically, and it always sounds good. It doesn't matter what system I'm using. It sounds good through my phone. It sounds good through any pair of headphones. It sounds good driving in my car. I love this album. So this was a difficult track for me, but it seems like the 360 audio does very, very well when it comes to instrumental tracks. I'm not sure as far as some, maybe some electronic music or maybe some dubstep, but as far as jazz or pop or classical, it seems to do very, very well with the, uh, the separation of the instrumentations. So what I've experienced with the Herbie Hancock track is I got really good separations with the horns to the point it sounded pleasant and it wasn't too harsh. The maracas are more pronounced in the 360 audio variant versus the regular audio variant, which I got through Quoba as a remastered version. It sounded like the maracas were kind of paneling from right to left ear versus in the 360 audio version, it was more full sounding. Some people prefer the paneling. Some people might prefer the the, um, the well-rounded version of that. Either way, it sounded both heavenly, but I did like the 360 audio version of that. Um, so some of the more hip hop tracks that I used was Outcast, So Fresh and So Clean and Scenario by A Tribe Called Quest, the LP ver mix version. Both of those tracks sounded very, very good. They are not in the highest of fidelity everywhere. Um, so, So Fresh and So Clean is very well mastered, very well produced as well. I don't have a preference over the 360 audio versus the regular listening. It didn't sound as pronounced to me. They both sounded very good. Um, I didn't get too much of a overly exhilarating experience from the 360 audio version as I would have from a regular uh, listening experience. 
So what I did experience though, that wasn't as good. Let's go ahead and get into the, the not so good part. I did not like the vocals on some R&B tracks. The separation of the vocals of some R&B tracks from the instrumentation made the high notes sound very harsh to my ears. And I'm referring to tracks, um, You Saved Me by Alicia Keys and Snow Allegra. That was not for me, not for me at all. The high notes, like I said, the, the, the lingering notes sounded pitchy and it just didn't really click well with me. It wasn't, it wasn't a pleasurable experience. Um, the Doja Cat Weekend, You Write, I all in all don't like that track. I, I'm not a fan of Doja Cat. Apparently, after listening to this track, I've realized that. And this, the track was just not for me. Again, it sounded peaky and pitchy. The Weekend's vocals, she always sounds good on everything. She sounds good on everything. But I did not like her vocals with the 360 audio variant. I went to Amazon Music for the Doja Cat and the Alicia Keys track because I could not find them on Quobuzz. Um, and they sounded a lot better being more mixed in to the instrumentations than they did with um, the 360 audio variants. That's just my opinion. Nina Simone, I Shall Be Released. That is a track I also know, like the hip hop tracks. I did, did not like her vocals on it as well. Again, the separation between her, the vocals and uh, the, the mix with the instrumentations just made it sound peaky. And if you remember my original video regarding my audio test with the Sonys, I'm not a big treble fan. So that could be the reasoning for it. Maybe some of you guys might like it because of the, the high pitched treble. Um, but it's just not for me. So that concludes my audio experience with the 360 audio. I only use those seven tracks. And again, I'll say them one more time. Herbie Hancock, Watermelon Man, uh, Tribe Called Quest, Scenario, the LP version, Outcast, So Fresh and So Clean, Mob Deep, Shook Ones Part 2. Let me go over Mob Deep real quick. Mob Deep, Shook Ones Part 2, again, another classic hip-hop track. It did sound very, very well put together with the 360 audio, but I don't have a preference for it over a regular listening experience. Um... Alicia Keys and Snow Allegra, You Saved Me, Not For Me. Doja Cat, The Weeknd, You Write, Not For Me. Nina Simone, I Shall Be Released. Vo vocals were very peaky and harsh. Again, not for me. So all in all, just to kind of wrap this up, between all the different tracks, the 360 audio seems to do, do very, very well when it comes to instrumental tracks. If you have instrumental tracks that you like to listen to, it does very, very well. I'm not as uh, clinical when it comes to some instrumental tracks because I'm not a big classical listening fan. Um, I, I don't listen to, you know, say opera. So if you're an opera fan, I would like to know your opinions on the 360 audio and how that uh, affects your experience. But I'm not a fan of those genres. Dubstep, not really a fan of dubstep. Don't know the genre too well. So I won't speak on it definitively but it seems to do very very well with my listening test when it comes to individualized tracks for um instrumentals very very well put together don't can't do r&b can't do pop music when it comes to 360 audio too peaky a little bit too peaky when it comes to the separation of the vocals and the instrumentation hip-hop Love hip-hop, can always do hip-hop, doesn't matter what format it's in, I love it, it's my favorite genre of music, so it always works well for me. Um, and I guess that concludes my 360 audio experience with my new Sony uh, WF-1000XM4s, <laughs> long name. But I'd like to hear you guys' opinions on it, if you have these headphones, and if you do like other different types of music, and you are giving out the 360 audio a try, Put your opinions down there in the comment section. And if you like music as much as I like music, go ahead and give me a subscribe and a follow. And we'll go ahead and continue our discussions in the future.